As the launch of Starship Flight 6 draws near, exciting new revelations continue to surface about this monumental spacecraft. In a series of impactful announcements, SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell made groundbreaking statements poised to shape the future of the Starship program. These bold visions promise to ignite the most profound revolution in the nearly 70-year journey of space exploration. Let's dive into the details on today's episode of Alpha Tech. What SpaceX leaders revealed about Starship is undoubtedly fascinating, but first we need to address a slightly important update. The launch schedule for Starship Flight 6 has been adjusted. On the morning of November 16th, SpaceX official X account announced a rescheduled launch for Starship Flight 6, moving it from November 18th to the 19th. Targeting Tuesday, November 19th for Starship 6 flight test, a 30-minute launch window opens at 4 p.m. Central Time. So is there an issue with Starship? Well, not to worry too much. Gwyn has already mentioned a potential shift in the launch date during her speech at the 31st Annual Baron Investment Conference November 15th. She didn't specify the exact reason for the delay, but regular followers of live streams might at Starbase notice that there doesn't seem to be any issues with Starship or Super Heavy. The likely delay reason is to allow teams a bit more time to ensure better performance. Now, SpaceX has a three-day window for Flight 6. November 18th, 19th, and 20th, as per the road closures announced. So even if the launch get moves to the 20th, it shouldn't come as a surprise. The more important consideration here is ensuring every step of the launch process is carried out meticulously. The flight marks a big milestone in Starship's development, signaling the end of its first version and paving the way for a more powerful rocket in the future. Although this launch may not achieve the goal of catching Starship's second stage, it's expected to catch Super Heavy. More critically, it represents a transition into a new phase of development. Some critics argue that Starship's testing phase is costly and yields no immediate profit. However, with a vehicle that's got the potential to dominate the space industry, early sacrifices and even failures are inevitable. Looking at SpaceX's capabilities, do you believe Starship can succeed? Personally, we have high hopes for Starship. We think SpaceX's vision and potential to make Starship the most groundbreaking program in space history. SpaceX has already secured its position as a global leader. Its partially reusable Falcons have completed over 100 launches this year alone a number that continues to grow. In comparison, the next closest U.S. rocket company, Rocket Lab, has launched to orbit only 12 times this year, with several single-digit achievements. Additionally, with a workforce of 15,000, SpaceX has secured billions in government contracts from DoD and NASA, becoming NASA's sole U.S. partner for ferrying crews to and from the ISS using the Dragon. And let's not forget the Starlink network, which Gwen Shotwell proudly describes as the financial backbone for SpaceX's ambitious multi-role spacecraft of the future. Now, as we know, Starlink Constellation continues to serve as a big revenue generator, providing the financial foundation for many of SpaceX's projects. SpaceX right now is valued at $210 billion based on the pricing of recent tender offers of shares in secondary markets, although the Financial Times reported on November 15th that an upcoming tender offer at a higher share price would boost that valuation to $250 billion. The most valuably publicly traded company, chipmaker NVIDIA, has a market capitalization of about $3.4 trillion as of November 15th. Also speaking at the 31st Barron Investment Conference, Gwen Shotwell, president and COO at SpaceX, said that their current valuation is largely driven by Starlink, which now has 4 million subscribers. We're going to make some money on Starlink this year, she said. We've had quarters of making money on Starlink in the past. She declined to go into specifics about the finances of Starlink when asked. A report earlier this year by Quilty Analytics said Starlink would generate $6.6 billion for SpaceX and $600 million in free cash flow even after accounting for the cost to build and launch the satellites. The company is incredibly valuable, I think, right now because of Starlink, she said. Starlink will add a zero probably at least as we continue to grow the Starlink system. That growth comes in many different markets, from residential services to maritime and aviation connectivity. SpaceX will begin offering direct-to-device services within the next month or so, she said, with an initial version for very light data and text messaging. Indeed, Starlink's business model is a brilliant niche for SpaceX, all thanks to the foresight of Gwen Shotwell, the most powerful woman at SpaceX. This demonstrates that she's someone who not only talks the talk, but walks the walk. While Elon's statements often leave us marveling at his and his company's balanced ambition, Shotwell's words instill a sense of trust and reliability like no other. The clearest proof lies in the rapid growth and immense potential of Starlink like we talked about. Of course, Gwyn's remarks are not limited to Starlink alone. It seems she uses Starlink as a benchmark to illustrate what lies ahead for the program's development. The company's president thinks that Starship's launch system will have a bigger-than-Starlink long-term impact. 
She said that Starship will take SpaceX to the top and become one of the most valuable companies in the world. Ultimately, I think Starship will be the thing that takes us over the top as one of the most valuable companies. We can't even envision what Starship's going to do for humanity and humans' lives, and I think it'll be the most valuable part of SpaceX. That is based on the belief, she said, that the fully reusable rocket with a payload capacity to LEO could exceed 100 metric tons and will change everything about spaceflight, not just lowering launch costs. Starship's so big that the concept of how we put things into space, how people travel in space, is totally different. One example she gave was using Starship to launch a satellite. If the satellite was not working, she explained, the satellite could be brought back into Starship's payload bay to be either repaired or brought back to Earth. Access to satellite repair or retrieval capability would represent a major advancement in space operations. Till now, most satellites have been unreachable once they're deployed. If they break, operators typically have to work around the problem or just to write the whole thing off. The ability to retrieve satellites using Starship's payload bay would fundamentally change this dynamic. Rather than being confined to troubleshooting remotely, operators could physically repair or replace the components. Alternatively, the whole satellite could get brought back to Earth for a complete overhaul. This capability would have significant economic impacts. The cost of losing a satellite due to a minor but critical failure could be greatly reduced. Insurance calculations and satellite design philosophies might shift to account for repairability rather than focusing solely on reliability. Beyond economics, such a capability could help address the growing space debris problem. Rather than abandoned satellites slowly becoming hazards in orbit, they could be retrieved and either repaired or properly disposed of. This would support more sustainable use of key orbital regions. What we're doing with the work we're doing is to allow ordinary people to go to space, Shotwell added. She predicted Starship would rapidly eclipse the company's existing Falcon family of rockets, which has been launched more than 400 times. I would not be surprised if we fly 400 Starships in the next four years, she said. That will be in parallel with Falcon 9, but she suggested that the vehicle could be retired along with the Dragon spacecraft for crew and cargo missions in as little as six to eight years as customers move to Starship. Starship is really a replacement. It obsoletes Falcon 9 and the Dragon capsule. Now we're not shutting down Falcon. We are not shutting down Dragon. We'll be flying that six to eight more years, she said. But ultimately, people are going to want to fly on Starship. It's bigger, it's more comfortable, it'll be less expensive, Shotwell added. Ron Barron, founder and CEO of Barron Capital, who participated in the interview with Shotwell, appeared convinced of SpaceX's growth potential with both Starship and Starlink. He said his firm made seven times our money since it started investing in SpaceX in 2017. We think we're going to triple our money again over the next five years, and we think in the 2030s we could make five times again. Referring to SpaceX's chief executive, Elon Musk, he added, believes our goals are very conservative to his goals. This statement reflects reality. It seems everything Gwen Shotwell is executing aligns seamlessly with Elon's far-reaching plan. And that's not limited to just SpaceX. His other companies also work towards a shared overarching goal that few have recognized. Starting with the development of SpaceX's Starship making a pivotal role in human spaceflight. As the world's first fully reusable orbital launch vehicle, it's a fundamental shift in how we approach space travel. With its massive payload capacity of up to 200 metric tons, Starship's not just another rocket. It's potentially the key that could unlock regular travel between the Earth and Mars. The interconnected nature of Elon's companies reveals a fascinating potential roadmap to Mars colonization. Tesla's expertise in EVs and battery technology could be crucial for developing Mars rovers. Their advanced solar technology, essential for Tesla's Earth-based operations, could be adapted to harness the limited sunlight available on the red planet for power generation. The Boring Company's tunneling expertise might find an unexpected application on Mars. Their technology could be vital for creating underground habitats that protect settlers from harsh radiation and extreme temperature fluctuations on the Martian surface. What began as a solution to the Earth's traffic problems could become essential for human survival on another planet. When we look at the Optimus robot program, its potential applications for Mars become clear. These robots could perform dangerous external maintenance tasks in the airless Martian environment, reducing risk to humans. They could build habitats, maintain solar arrays, and perform routine tasks that would be hazardous for humans. The Tesla RoboTaxi concept, while designed for Earth cities, hints at future transport systems on Mars. As compounds grow and expand, efficient transportation between different habitats and areas becomes crucial. Electric autonomous vehicles adapted for Mars could provide this essential mobility. 
However, these ambitious plans face significant challenges. The Martian atmosphere's thinness makes landing big vehicles quite difficult. The planet's radiation environment poses serious risk to humans. The need for reliable life support systems, sustainable power generation, cannot be understated. This timeline for these developments is uncertain. While Starship's development proceeds, each test flight provides new data and challenges to overcome. The integration of technologies from differing companies, while promising, requires extensive adaptation to the Martian environment. Regulatory approvals, safety considerations, and technological hurdles all influence the timeline. Success in this endeavor will likely require collaboration between Elon's companies, international space agencies, and research institutions that all have vital roles to play. The challenge of establishing a human presence on Mars is far too complex for any single organization. The financial requirements for such an undertaking are staggering. Beyond the development of spacecraft and support systems, the establishment of Martian infrastructure will require sustained investment. This includes not just the initial settlement, but the ongoing support of human presence on Mars. Despite these challenges, we are living in some remarkable times. The convergence of reusable rockets, EVs, robotics, and tunneling technologies creates unprecedented possibilities for human expansion into space. Whether or not the exact vision plays out as currently imagined, these technological developments are pushing the boundaries of human achievement and opening new frontiers for exploration. And that's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.